Hello, everyone. Uh, it's 10 p.m. Do you know what your proxy is doing? Understanding the XDS protocol. This is going to be a talk about some of Envoy's dynamic configuration mechanism and a little bit about how we use it at Stripe. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Isaac. I work at Stripe on what's called the orchestration team. So we're, we're responsible for the Kubernetes deployment that we've been building out, as well as our Envoy service mesh. Uh, we're really excited about Envoy for mutual TLS. We're putting it between effectively every service at Stripe with the eventual goal of securing all of the routes between them for security and reliability. We have several thousand nodes right now. Uh, which we all manage with a custom management server that we I wrote uh, in about 5,000-ish lines ago. So it's not that much code, uh, but it's you know pretty significant. Uh, and then finally, we're hiring. So if you're interested in work at Stripe, uh, send me an email. Uh, come find me. Um, bit of terminology before we dive into the way the XTS protocol actually works. Envoy has a number of listeners associated with it. Um, this is a place where Envoy can listen for connections and then proxy requests through. Uh, each of these listeners has a set of routes. Um, a route is a mapping of request sort of metadata to a location that Envoy should send traffic. Each of those locations that Envoy should send traffic are referred to as a cluster, which is sort of a logical grouping of hosts. Um, and then each one of those hosts or destinations that Envoy can physically route traffic to is called an endpoint. Uh, each of these things can be configured dynamically via what's called the discovery service. Uh, in this diagram, Envoy is talking to a cluster discovery service, a route discovery service, which I'll just refer to as RDS, CDS, uh, EDS, LDS. Um, these things are all modular. You can kind of mix and match them, build them into different binaries, run them in different processes, run them across different machines, which is what we do. Uh, but they all speak the XDS protocol, which just the X stands in for the specific resource that Envoy is discovering with. Uh, it's a push-based protocol based on gRPC, uh, which means that it's sort of more challenging to construct invalid configuration or configuration that is totally imparsable by Envoy. Uh, and then finally, there's an acknowledgement mechanism built right into the protocol, meaning that you can determine whether Envoy is sort of doing the right thing as you expect. So let's dive into kind of what one of these streams looks like. This is a timing diagram. On the left-hand side, we have Envoy. On the right-hand side, we have a management server. Let's assume that this is a cluster discovery server. Um, when Envoy boots up, it makes a discovery request to the management server, uh, letting it know that it exists and providing any metadata that it needs to determine the right clusters to send back. The management server constructs a discovery response with the set of clusters that it wants Envoy to know about um, and a version number associated with it. It then passes this down the gRPC stream, and Envoy sort of updates its internal state to the version number that uh, the management server has passed it. Finally. Envoy acknowledges receipt of this discovery response by passing back a discovery request with the version number set to the state that it was passed from the management server. Um, this allows the management server to know that everything is working as expected and it's received, and the Envoy on the other end has received the, the discovery response that the management server sent. Um, later, based on changes in infrastructure or just after a time period, however you construct your management server, the management server can spontaneously send an update to Envoy, letting it know of a change in cluster information or a new cluster has been added. Uh, to do this, it constructs a new response uh, and associates a new version number with it, which then updates Envoy's internal state and passes that back to the management server to acknowledge receipt of the response. Um, this is sort of the happy path when everything goes right, um, but it can also go wrong. Uh, in this case, we've uh, double included a cluster, so cluster one is listed twice in the discovery response. Envoy doesn't really know how to process this um, because if you like make a request to cluster one, it won't know where to send that traffic. Uh, so Envoy will reject receipt of this discovery response and respond with the previous version number back to the management server. Um, this indicates to the management server that it's not like processable. It'll also log out a nice error message. At Stripe, we page on these events uh, because it means that Envoy is probably not routing traffic in the way that we expect, and it means that we've misconfigured the management server. So we want someone to like wake up and take a look at it. Um, oh no, I have more slides. Uh, the XDS's modularity can also lead to some race conditions. If you run the discovery services across different processes or across different hosts in a distributed fashion. Um, okay, perfect. Um, let's say in this case, on the left-hand side, we have an endpoint discovery service, and on the right-hand side, we have a cluster discovery service. Recall that an endpoint is a specific host, and a cluster is sort of a logical grouping of them. 
uh, Envoy, in this case, boots up and makes discovery requests to the endpoint discovery service and the CDS simultaneously. But the endpoint discovery service responds first, letting Envoy know that some cluster maps to a given endpoint. Uh, in this case, Envoy is like, oh, what's cluster one? I haven't actually been told about that yet from the CDS. Uh, and it will like drop traffic or uh, have sort of undefined behavior for this period. I think it'll actually just block all the traffic. Um, this is bad because it means that you're potentially dropping traffic um, on that route for that period of time when the, the, you're waiting for the CDS at Stripe. We actually like take this trade off. Uh, we rely on sort of um, Envoy retry logic as well as application level retry logic. But if you're in an environment where you care about sort of very precise traffic routing, then this is potentially a problem. Uh, one way that you can get around this is by coordinating between management servers, uh, storing sort of the state of things in a database or in Redis or you know, some backing store. Um, but that's like fairly expensive. Um, even better, there's this newer protocol that Envoy has implemented more recently called the Aggregated Discovery Service. Um, the Aggregated Discovery Service, or ADS, allows you to multiplex multiple resource types over a single gRPC stream. So Envoy will make multiple discovery requests for different kinds of resources, and the management server will respond with those resources in the precise order that it wants. Uh, which means that you can guarantee sort of more precisely ordered traffic updates because Envoy will only ever subscribe to a single ADS at a given time. Uh, in summary, dynamic config is really awesome. We're really excited about it at Stripe because it lets us change sort of the configuration of Envoy across the fleet without needing to go modify a config file everywhere, or go write out a new template. Uh, the XTS protocol lets you push updates at will. You can push updates without modifying the configuration of Envoy everywhere as long as you just uh, send a new discovery response in the stream. Uh, it lets you monitor for malformed or unprocessable configuration. You can wake yourself up, page yourself if you've misconfigured your management server or the clusters are being sent wrong or whatever. Uh, and then finally, you can sequence updates precisely, meaning that you can guarantee that traffic arrive, or that, that uh, configuration arrives in the order that you expect, and this is even easier with the aggregated discovery service. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, the full documentation for this is available in the data plane API repository, as well as the protobuf gRPC specs. Uh, there's a reference implementation at Go Control Plane, which I highly recommend using, as opposed to writing your own, which is what we did. <laughs> uh, and then Cilium and Console also bundle sort of high-quality XTS implementations. Uh, and then Istio is like a pluggable service mesh that provides a lot of this for you. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, take care. Bye.